Engineering Newswire, we're talking to virtual heads, firing sexists in Silicon Valley, and fishing far-flung space garbage from the bottom of the ocean. Gross. The University of Cambridge has unveiled a virtual talking head, Zoe, that is capable of expressing lifelike facial expressions. Here's how it works. A user enters a line of text and selects from a range of sliders that determine emotion. Hit the enter key and boom! Zoe will read the message in as happy, angry, or sad as you desire. Don't forget mom's birthday. Have you got a gift yet? Chill, Zoe! I won't skip my mother's birthday this year! Jeez! The team believes that Zoe is the most expressive, controllable avatar ever created, and that it could be used as a digital personal assistant in the future. They are working to improve the realism while exploring real-world applications such as sending friends a digital face message that conveys the emotion you're feeling. Finally, the death of the emoticon, but I would hate to receive any hate mail from something like this. Until recently, I only had a voice. Now I have a synthesized no. face too. No. Forking repos and big dongles brought big problems at the PyCon 2013 conference held in Santa Clara last week. Adria Richards was fired from her developer evangelist post at SendGrid after tweeting about a pair of men who allegedly held an inappropriate private conversation while seated in the row behind her. Not cool, she tweeted. Jokes about forking repos in a sexual way in big dongles? Right behind me with the hashtag PyCon to alert the appropriate conference authorities. Richards also tweeted a photo of the alleged perpetrators, which we won't show here since enough careers have already come to an end after this dark week in the valley. The two men, accused of such adolescent antics, worked as developers for mobile gaming monetization and marketing company Playhaven. I use the past tense because while engineer Alex Reed was praised by Playhaven CEO Andy Yang as a valued employee and was able to keep his job, the other engineer was fired because the company is dedicated to gender equality and values honorable behavior. At least 50% of the time, anyways. The incident poured gasoline on a gender equality fire that already burns bright in the valley. After all, it was celebrated that female PyCon attendance eclipsed 20% this year. The sorry situation is yet another reminder that in a culture of social sharing, with great followers comes great responsibility. Amazon.com founder Jeff Bezos recently pulled a James Cameron by recovering some crusty old F1 rocket engines used in the Apollo missions. Big deal, right? I mean, people restore engines all the time. It figures a guy with that much money would go for something so exotic. Except he pulled it from beneath 14,000 feet of water. What isn't flung off into the void, never to return, during a launch either ends up being destroyed on re-entry in a blaze of glory or crashing into the sea, unless it's designed for reuse. The Apollo engines found their way to the bottom of the Atlantic. With around 1,522,000 foot-pounds of thrust, the F-1 engines remain the most powerful single-chamber liquid-fueled rocket engine ever developed. Now, in a new feat of engineering, they've been recovered using remotely operated vehicles that rely on fiber optic cables for data transmission and 4,000 volt electric cables to supply power. Though Bezos and his team found and recovered the engines under international salvage law, they remain NASA property. But the Space Association said, we look forward to the restoration of these engines by the Bezos team and applaud Jeff's desire to make these historic artifacts available for public display. So now the biggest challenge for the CEO is still ahead as Bezos will have to deal with old materials and 40 years of seawater wear. Depending on what circles you run in, you may have heard that the Super Bowl had a few technical difficulties this year. While the partial blackout delayed the Ravens' route to victory by 34 minutes, it paled in comparison to malfunctions of Super Bowl's past. After the red-hot fire of Monday morning engineering quarterbacks subsided, Entergy New Orleans hired forensic engineer John Palmer to perform an independent analysis of the February 3rd power outage. His report concluded that the disruption was a malfunction or misoperation of the relay. Such brevity fired further fervor amongst engineers. And now, a dramatic reading. 
How lame. Device failure? As a reader of these technical magazines, please go on and tell us what happened exactly. All you get from this is speculation and media sensationalism. This article is nothing more than a politically correct concealment of the facts of what truly happened designed for a newspaper or magazine, not for a technical publication. As promised, we reached out to Mr. Palmer to get the full reports. Here's your in-depth analysis. Here is the face of your culprits, the Bay 8 Type ZSD relay of the Vault 24 switchgear lineup. The report is now available at pddnet.com backslash Superdome Fiasco. Please read, comment, and discuss. You too lost Proton and GP, I've got my eyes on you. Teradynamics is a name researchers have given to the science of legged animals and vehicles moving on granular and other complex surfaces. Great, another complex buzzword. Maybe, but Teradynamics could allow designers to optimize legged robots operating in complex environments for search and rescue missions, space exploration, and who knows what else. Currently, most robots rely on wheels for movement, but as robots become smaller and the territory they are exploring more massive, an alternative means of locomotion is becoming necessary. Teradynamics, not just a buzzword now. According to the researchers, the key insight to the teradynamic design was the forces applied to the independent elements of the robot legs could be simply summed together to provide a reasonably accurate measure of the net force on a robot moving through a granular media. Aerodynamic designers have long used a series of equations known as Navier-Stokes to describe the movement of vehicles through the air. Similarly, these equations also allow hydrodynamic designers to know how submarines and other vehicles move through the water. Terodynamics could provide designers with an efficient technique for understanding motions through media that flows around legs of terrestrial animals and robots. Beyond optimizing the design of future small robots, Terodynamics work could also lead to a better understanding of the complex environments through which said robots will have to move. I just wonder how they can handle sinkholes. Terodynamics, yep, sinkholes and Terodynamics. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For pd and TV, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire. Don't ah! mom's butt.